Alright, what's up guys? So, IGN has uploaded the official review for Skull Island Rise of Kong. Now, I remember hearing a while back that they were making a King Kong game. And when I saw this, because I saw this earlier, and it was like, it was like uh, last week. And um, I was like, bro, I, I know this ain't that game that they were talking about. And I'm like, I I mean, I just, I don't know. Like, I was expecting it to, like, you know, be, like, something bigger, I guess. You know, more like a kind of like a AAA title. It, this is, <laughs> this is like an iPhone title. I don't know, man. Like, I'm I'm curious. Maybe it might be a game that I'll uh, play one day. I, I don't see myself paying money. And I think they're charging, like, $60 for this game. I'll have to check again after I'm uh, done with this video. But, you know, maybe, um, maybe whoever is reviewing it, they might talk on it. But, yeah, I was like, I, I was, I, I just, I don't know, man. Let's... Let's go, I don't know, maybe because there was just like some of the, of the stuff that I've seen, I was like, I, I don't know if I'll buy it, but let's go ahead and check out this video. Guys, if you haven't, make sure you go subscribe to IGN for more videos like this, and then that being said. Here's the thing about King Kong. He's not just an ape, he's a giant ape. It's his defining feature in the 1933 movie that birthed him and the ultimate cause of his tragic demise. Picking up people, climbing skyscrapers, fighting dinosaurs, being huge is Kong's whole deal. Skull Island Rise of Kong is bad for a lot of reasons, but the main one is it's a game that lets you play as an iconically large gorilla and somehow manages to make him feel exceedingly average. Rise of Kong portrays him in the most bland way possible, and then it matches that mediocrity for everything else around him. I don't know, man. It comes off as like, I, you know, like, I guess like if I had kids, I probably would get it for them just to kind of start them off with video games and then have them like work their way up to the, you know, the big leagues and things. But, you know, give, give them, give them a little bit of gamer score before they, they, you know, they, they really get into some games. Rise of Kong lets you experience how Kong became King Kong which was apparently by beating a lot of creatures to death and getting really angry while doing it. After swearing revenge on the giant raptor that killed Kong's parents, like some sort of gorilla Batman, you'll punch your way through each of Skull Island's five levels, all of which are as massive as they are boring. There's absolutely nothing here you haven't seen before in a hundred melee-focused action games. Combat gives Kong a light attack and a heavy attack, a dodge roll, and a block. While you'll earn it's some like special they're not moves even along fighting. the way, just kinda, there's never any reason to really use them. I Killing the boss at the end of each I level just, unlocks know, new, man. but not particularly interesting, abilities. Like a ground pound punch that hurts enemies and can break through certain rocks, or a heavy attack that can stun enemies and break through certain other rocks. Each new move also has skill trees with attributes <clears> you can buy that provide some nominal upgrades. But no matter what you upgrade or unlock, every fight is pretty much the same. First, hammer the light attack button to perform a three-hit combo. Then, use Kong's only cool ability, a shoulder charge that shoots him forward a short it's distance. It's like, it's that walk that he does, like, he's he's so determined, bro. He looks like he's on a treadmill. To interrupt the attack of whatever you're fighting. When the enemy takes enough damage, hit another button to perform a finishing move. Repeat, repeat, repeat. There are other little elements, such as an overly familiar rage ability that powers up so all I your attacks, but they're only good for breaking up your combo or finishing a fight slightly faster. You're never required to think about how an enemy attacks and use a special move to deal with it, or to change up tactics based on how many or which kinds of enemies are on the field. You play a giant ape who routinely kills literal dinosaurs, and Rise of Kong manages to make that prospect dull and yeah. lifeless. <laughs> it, it seems like it's almost like paying respects to like them classic uh king kong movies and stuff thankfully it's easy to just run past most enemies and you'll probably want to once you realize that there are hundreds of them and they mostly just waste your time 
Skill points to make yeah, that's not like you know. It, it just comes off as like it's a kid's game. It it's just not like I I think if I if I was a kid, it would seem more appealing to them than you know like adults and stuff. So yeah, kid. Yeah, kid. I feel like a kid will rock with this game. But yeah, somebody like myself, I'm like you know you want something a little you know more visually you know appealing and stuff. So we dished out at special ascension events, which are fights in specific arenas like it's funny because it's like we're roasting this game but there's a like a, probably a bunch of kids that's gonna be going out playing this game if they do see it and uh like yeah years later they'll be talking on it all like oh but then i felt like then they're gonna come across that 2005 king kong game that was based off of the movie and they're gonna be like hey yo why did we not get this <laughs> like 2023 we get this and 2005 kids they got that like nah bro that's that's messed that up are closed off until you finish them they come in two flavors kill all the enemies in the area, or climb around and destroy the nests of flying dinosaurs. Once you're done with the objective, you get a few points to invest into one of your meager upgrades. That means only boss fights and ascension events actually help make Kong stronger, and the many, many other enemies are just pointless filler. Yeah. The ascension events at least try to change things up by throwing different combinations know, of enemies at you. But the repetitive combat means they all shake out exactly the same way, requiring you to spend about a second to identify the two or three combat animations the enemies have, and then avoid the ones that can actually hurt you. There are five total ascension events in each level, and they're mostly pretty hard to miss, but like the rest of combat, they never feel satisfying or even particularly necessary to complete. Blow past one, and you'll miss out on a few points to unlock skills you don't really need, so who cares? The boss fights stand out at least a little from standard battles, with each including its own signature mechanic to shake things up. Hmm. For instance, the big sandworm boss throws rocks out of the earth when it emerges to attack you, and you can then bait it into smacking its head into those rocks, stunning it. You don't need to do that. You can just stand can. there and wail on the thing, stepping back before it does one of its oh, three you can. attacks. Oh, you can't. Oh, okay. But at least these fights attempt to engage your brain more than Rise of Kong's it's bog not standard even... battle. Oh, is it stunned? They are still derivative, simplistic, and unimaginative, but they're definitely better than the low bar set by everything else. Kong is a gorilla, so of course, climbing and jumping make up the other half of Skull Island. Like combat, the platforming here is the most pedestrian version of ideas you've seen before. You'll jump over a few gaps and climb some vines. Exciting, I know. Movement is more inoffensive than annoying, but it's worsened by level design that is absolutely unhinged. Each level is huge, a meandering and winding series of pathways that branch, loop, and cut back on one another. Your only goal is to get from one side of the biome to the other. But Skull hmm. Island is constantly trying to confuse you along the way, with an in-game map that only serves to preview how lost you're about to get. That's I, I think that's a plus, like long missions, big map. No, I think I think that's cool. I think that you know that's I had to say like if there is anything positive that I could say is that the development's like mindset was in the right place. I just think that how it was you know like how that their conclusion overall like the release of the game and its current state yeah it's like it definitely it's a start I, I will all right so if i can't say anything positive that this is a start and i think that you know it give them some more time because it might be like a you know an indie development um team where it's like they probably ask some people like hey take a chance on us and um yeah you know it's like they that that chance was uh given and then you know they they came out with this so it's like i i, I see it it's like you know it's a start Eventually, at some point in time, I think that they they'll come out with something better. But anyway, the assumption is that there may have been a version of Rise of Kong where tracking down ascension events, collectibles, and smart paths through levels was part of a bigger focus on exploration than there is in the final game. As usual, though, that idea is executed only in its thinnest and most simplistic form. Instead, you just get a confusing tangle of a level and your main challenge is to avoid accidentally wasting time by making big circles back to earlier areas on the map. Mm. Well, it's not like you're being timed, like I, I just... All of these elements, from platforming to combat, boss fights to skill allocation, 
are marred by Rise of Kong's many technical issues. Bugs abound, and despite the mercifully short campaign taking me only about 5 hours altogether, there were points when it appeared to softlock and become impossible to finish at all. Kong got stuck in platforms, fell through waterfalls, and disappeared behind objects. <laughs> Oh wow. The boss froze up after 30 seconds of fighting and never moved again, standing perfectly <laughs> still while I three hit comboed him into the ground. <laughs> Enemies sometimes wouldn't spawn correctly during ascension events, a problem that could only be solved by loading an earlier save and hoping it worked correctly on another Dang. go. And midway through, all the skill upgrades I had unlocked spontaneously relocked themselves, and the points I'd spent on them just disappeared. Luckily, wow. none of those upgrades actually mattered. And as oh, it's probably clear up. by now, Rise of Kong is an I wonder if that has anything to do with, like, okay, so, like, you save the game at one point, you do a bunch of different things, and I, I imagine, like, you'll save again, but then it's like, does it, like, if you don't save it, or you go back to the last thing, and you gotta do that stuff all over. That's, either way, though, it's like, nah, like, how, however it's set up, it's, it's still messed up that they do that. Again. With they data know the graphics for that, and a bro. mostly flat art style of gray rock walls and repetitive jungle trees. Its almost cartoonish vibe feels more like an attempt to mask its blocky low res character designs rather than an artistic choice. Cutscenes frequently include animations of creatures moving around like they've been picked up and dropped somewhere else, and there's this ridiculous flashback moment that just pastes a square <clears throat> of a still image over the screen. Was that no, was that the picture over the screen? Why did he why did they show it was like a picture cuz I that was the part that like that I saw and I was like, "Oh, like why did they just show like a random like he pulls a picture out, he looks at it or something, but it's like why they not just like cut that outside part?" Man, this not. I, that was the part where I saw it and I was like, no, nah, that's definitely not the game. There are also that's numerous so weird. points where you'll see trees not quite attached to the ground or rocks just haphazardly duplicated on top of each other. Oh, that is it all just crazy. looks sloppy and rushed, providing more evidence of a game that was created without a lot of care. Skull Island is ugly and full of bugs, but the real trouble is that at its core, it's just boring. It makes no meaningful attempts to do anything new or clever, with mindless combat and pointless platforming that make it feel like a worse version of every action game from the last 20 years. <laughs> this isn't the kind of bad game you can play to laugh at, or that took some Dang. cool swings but missed, or that creates weird combinations of technical snafus that lead to unexpected but entertaining results. It doesn't even rate enough to be called frustrating. Rise of Kong is fundamentally disinterested in itself. <clears throat> a giant ape game that doesn't even care enough about what it's doing hey. to make the ape feel giant. It does come off as a Switch game, For though. more of 2023's worst games, check out our reviews of The Lord of the Rings Golem or Testament, The Order of High Human, which actually scored lower than Kong. And for everything else, including a few good games, stick with IGN. Yeah, it, it does come off as like, it, it could have been like a game for switching things. That's crazy. Dang, bruh. I mean, here's the thing. You know, I've seen and played a lot of different games before where I was like, fam, I, who signed off on that? Like, I'm saying like, I, even when I think of like, okay, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, for an example, not comparing the games, but I'm saying like, if it came down to it where it's like the knowledge that I have now of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and let's say if it was like both games, you know, I had, and I probably wouldn't play neither of them. But yeah, I think I would give the uh, the King Kong game a chance and stuff. Just because it's like, I, you know, last time I played the King Kong game, I was, yeah, I was in elementary, bro. Like I was, yeah, it was like, what, like, what, what was going on back in 2000? I think that game did come out in 2005. But yeah, I'm saying it's like, you know, I, I just think that, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely one of those games where I'm like, I would buy it on Switch. Like if I just, you know, need um, to kill off some time and things and like, oh, you know, let me, or even if I was like, oh, I, um, I'm close to getting like a hundred thousand gamer score or something and i was like oh i could play this game and then you know get that gamer score and stuff so yeah i was all like yeah i, I definitely would um um uh play it you know either for the gamer score or just to kill some time but 
yeah, it, it's like, it's not one of those games where I'm like, oh, I'm so eager, like, I'm sitting down or standing at the window like Arnold Schwarzenegger in um, Terminator 2 waiting for that game to drop. It's, it's, yeah, it's just, it's one of those games where I'm all like, hey, you know, one day I, I think it'll be appreciated, but for now... Yeah, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's something where it's like, mm, I, I don't, I don't know, bro, but, no, yeah, that's why, I, that's why I actually wanted to see, um, the price of this game, because if they charge it, like, $59.99, I'm like, nah, bro, oh, they already got it on sale on Steam, what's the Steam ratings looking like, dang, mostly negative. So it's only $39.99. They got a 20% um uh 20% off deal going on um for if you uh want to get for $31.99. And then if you want to get the um Colossal Edition, which is what comes with the Colossal Edition. There's like experience the uh what's this? Rise of the Colossal Pack. Um eight exclusive film grain filters, eight Kong style variants, choose your own color scheme for Kong, clean out bino white Kong. Hmm. Boss Rush Mode, Conquer All Titans as quickly as possible and try to beat your best tiny you need Colossal. Okay, okay, behind the scene. Why did they not just add that in the game? I feel like if they really trying to, well, I, I guess, but I'm like, nah, I just think that something like that should have just been added into the game versus, oh, go and get this special edition uh, if you want to play it and things. Nah, I think that's kind of messed up. So, but I, they probably wasn't thinking that that game was going to be getting hated on like that, so... But, um, yeah, anyways, and that being said, make sure if you guys haven't, go subscribe to IGN for more videos like this. Like, subscribe to me, too. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching, and peace.